Hello QST readers and ARRL members worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, and I write the Ask Dave column for QST. This is the column's supplemental video for the April 2024 edition, and we're going to look a little bit more at antenna tuners. This is figure two in the column. We're looking at the internals of an MFJ antenna tuner. We see two capacitors right here and an inductor. Now, we can't pick any inductance we want, but we're going to tap this so that you can pick one of ten inductances. Over here is a little ballon that's useful if you want to use balanced line. Now this tuner will tune into an antenna that's got uh, coax and it will also tune into a long wire down here and if you put a jumper between here and here it will activate these right here. Now here is the basic schematic for a typical antenna tuner in a T configuration. Now that would imply there are other configurations and there certainly are. You can look in the ARRL antenna book and find many, but this is the most common for the kind of tuners that are sold commercially today. Now let's talk about where we place that tuner in the string. Transmitter, it needs to be 50 ohms here. You have an SWR bridge or a way to measure the SWR. A lot of times that's built into the antenna tuner, not always. Now, this is the point where you're looking for one-to-one -one SWR, so you fiddle with the knobs on this to get that. And then what you are tuning is not just the antenna, but the antenna, the feed line, and parts of the antenna tuner, and the environment of the antenna are all being adjusted for in the antenna tuner so that you'll have 50 ohms going in here. Now, note that you can purchase antenna tuners with a built-in uh, SWR meter. So you have forward on one side and reflected on the other, and you read the SWR where the needles cross, hence the name crossed needle meter. Um, but I usually look at the reflected power and try to adjust for the lowest reflected power. Now note you've got your transmitter antenna and inductance in a little different order, but it's basically the same. Now, wait a minute. As we looked at this one, we noticed we could only pick certain inductances, but we can tune the capacitors anywhere we want. Is it possible to do that with inductors? The answer is yes. And this is a picture from rfparts.com out in California uh, selling uh, these roller inductors if you want to roll your own antenna tuner. The more expensive commercial tuners have these built in. But here's how they work. There's a little slide right here. This thing goes around. As you turn this, usually with a crank handle, it will cause this main part here to rotate and this little thing here will follow along. So instead of getting inductance every tap or so, you're getting continuous changes in inductance. This is useful if you have high power and lots of great big antennas that you're trying to tune. Here is an example of an MFJ tuner that uh, will only handle, uh, I think, up to 200 or 300 watt. It's the MFJ 969 and it is the Deluxe Versa Tuner 2. And here is your thing that turns that uh, uh, big center part that I told you about here. And it has a little digital counter on top, so you can exactly repeat your measurements on the inductor. These are a little harder to repeat. Uh, a half a turn here goes through the entire range of the capacitor. This one has the ability to pick between two different antennas or a balanced line, and there is a built-in dummy load. Now, the, although this can only handle about 150 watts or so, maybe 200, uh, the meter itself will go up to 300, and you select that by pushing that. Or if you're doing QRP, it's hard to get much deflection here, so you can switch the sensitivity here. Uh, and you can choose for the power reading 
or your forward power, whether you want it to be peak or average. Now, since you're doing a peak or average type thing and you want to light up the meter, this does require 12 volts to run, whereas the other does not. Now, there are automatic tuners. This is the back panel of the MFJ-993B IntelliTuner Automatic Antenna Tuner, which is one of the most popular uh, automatic tuners ever made. Uh, and look, you've got your transmitter comes in. You've got one antenna, but you can switch to another antenna. Or if you put the jumper wire here, you can use the balanced line, or without the jumper wire, just tune a long wire with this. Note that it also has an interface to the radio, a remote port that can be used for a variety of things, such as antennas that will tune themselves if you tell them what frequency you're on. And it does definitely require power because there's a small uh, computer in here that first reads the SWR and then computes the amount of inductance and capacitance that it needs to put in and switches that in with relays. Now, I mentioned RF parts. I uh, used their pictures of the roller inductor. I've never dealt directly with RF parts, but I do want to give them a shout out. Uh, they are located in San Marcos, which is in the San Diego area of Southern California, and they sell basically anything, as they say, from milliwatts to kilowatts. Now, this is not a sponsored video. I'm just pointing this out because they seem to have about everything. By the way, these people also own diamond antennas, and I've used diamond antennas before, and they're great. So there you have it. Just a quick look inside a modern antenna tuner and what's in there. Yes, you can roll your own. You can find roller inductors commonly at uh, ham fest, swap fests, and so on. Uh, they're very common. Uh, all of the older antenna tuners had them, and so uh, they are readily available. If you buy a new one, they're pretty expensive. That's why antenna tuners with the roller inductors are much more expensive, hundreds of dollars more expensive. If you have questions about ham radio, any question, send it to askdave, all one word, at arrl.org. Askdave at arrl.org. And that'll come to me and I may be able to answer it in the column, in a video, or maybe just a direct reply, whichever works for you. I'm going to put a little plug in here since I put a plug in for RF parts or great organization, I'm sure. Again, not sponsored. This video is sponsored by the ARRL. And I'm just bringing this RF parts to you as telling you that there is such an organization out there. Now, I urge you to join the ARRL. Not too long ago, I filled up my Jeep at a gas station and it cost me more to fill up the Jeep than it does for a year at the ARRL. Now, when you join the ARRL, you have access to four magazines, and those magazines are great. QST is the one I recommend. If you're new ham, you might want to look at on the air, but you can look at all four of them on your screen. And I like to read QST now with my iPad, and then there's also all the services the league offers. By the way, this year I will be at Dayton, so I'm looking forward to it and looking forward to seeing you there. So, until we next meet, 73.